Hello everybody and welcome back to another weekly update video. This week we had a lot of information dropped on us. I already did talk a bit about the third party client issue so I'm not going to be discussing that too much today but I will leave a link in the description for that video. We also have more information on the new Twisted League uh, which I'm actually more excited about now as well as there's going to be some nerfs on the new Basilisk Knight. Uh, so yeah the Basilisk job is already kind of hard to obtain but now uh, the actual knights have gotten a huge buff or nerf, I guess, however you want to look at it. They are way stronger, and the drops are pretty much the same. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoy, and let's get started. Okay, now to begin with here, we have the nerf, I'm going to call it, to the Basilisk Knight, nerfing their viability anyway. Now, apparently there was a vocal minority of people that uh, were saying that the uh, best in slot a melee helm should not be coming from a monster that is that weak. So now this week we actually got a giant buff to the overall strength of the Basilisk Knight. Their total HP is now 300 which is insane as well as they now have a special attack ability which can hit a maximum of 40 which when you consider it's a level 60 slayer monster it seems kind of overtuned I don't know like they have more hit points than an abyssal demon that they have more hit points than dark beasts like for a level 60 slayer monster they really should not be that strong. I understand that there's a best in slot item here but they made them a 60 slayer requirement. They were obviously intended to be killed by mid-level players so now they kind of just seem like they're in a really weird spot. I guess the only benefit here is the Fremenic phase guard will stay expensive, I don't know. Regardless this was a pretty controversial change and I expect some of this to get reverted in the following weeks but we will see. On top of that, there were a few minor changes to the actual Fremenic Exiles quest. Now the Basilisk Knight will now appear in the skill guide, well that's nice. The Fremenic Shield crafted on Anita's Knot from Arctic Pinewood and Rope has been renamed. <laughs> this is to avoid confusion with the older Fremenic Shield. And there were just a few minor bug fixes, so nothing major there. And once again, if you don't know, RuneFest is happening this Friday. Maybe one year I will make it to RuneFest. It's just so damn far, but it would be a lot of fun. But anyway, it's on Friday and Saturday. Okay, next up here we have the Old School RuneScape Twisted League, and I'm actually a little more excited for it now, now that they've actually proposed a league with rules and variants and whatnot. Now, if you imagine a League of Diablo, it is a shorter version of the regular game, and you'll go ahead and do a run-through of the main campaign or the main game uh, with some variations or new armor or new equipment, stuff like that. Now, for RuneScape, I was kind of skeptical because RuneScape, you cannot just quickly run through the campaign. <laughs> You will be doing that for years so it's gonna have to be very different or the experience rates are gonna have to be higher for me to actually go back and create another new account and play in this twisted league i'm still probably not going to do it because i have too much on the go right now but had i actually not had a few other series on the go i may have actually done it okay now for the very first twisted league you're going to be playing as an iron man or iron woman locked to the Karend in kebos region so it's going to be an area restricted Ironman and it's going to be on Zaya and the Kebos area. Now the respawn point is going to be set in the Karend castle which is cool. The only teleports that will work are those that are already in Karend or Kebos and the ancient and lunar spell books will not be accessible. All clues obtained will only have steps that can be completed within Karend and Kebos. That's pretty cool. Now there will be accelerated experience rates and I believe I read a jmod comment that they're thinking three times which in my opinion seems kind of low however there is going to be other ways to boost your experience rates uh, which could get it up into the 10 times 12 times area which i think is the acceptable minimum that i would actually need to go back and play it now you're going to be starting with a few stats as well you're going to start with three herb lore and 15 agility that will allow you to access those two skills in the Zaya area. You will also start with the Druidic Ritual, Dragon Slayer, and Rune Mysteries. And on top of that, the Slayer Master can be used at 5 combat and Konar will only assign tasks on Zaya once again, so it is heavily modified, but I think it looks for a pretty fun game mode. Okay, now to kind of give you direction, there's going to be a list of tasks throughout uh, the Zaya area. For example, there's skilling tasks, checking the health of a redwood tree, and there's PVM tasks like killing a jelly. And throughout that, you're going to be getting league points, which you can go ahead and spend on different relics. And the relics are basically buffs for your account, and they will last until the end of the league. For example, one of the options here is bones dropped by a creature are automatically buried and awarded four times the experience. Like, they're pretty strong buffs, and I think that in conjunction with a higher experience rate will make it so you can probably get to 99 pretty easily in two months but i still kind of think that the experience rate should be tuned up a bit more 
as this really shouldn't be taking that much of your time. Like if it is only going to last for two months, uh, I think most people should be able to complete the content in that amount of time. Like if you think of Diablo, it isn't hard to complete your main item set, to complete your main goals in just a month or two. And that is playing kind of casually, and I think that's what this should be if it's going to be just a side account. Now, one thing worth noting is if you use your main account to log into this, you can't actually play your main at the same time, so you'll need to make a new account. Now, of course, there will be different rewards. There's going to be stuff like League 2 League rewards, which will not leave the League game mode, and they won't be transferable to the main game. And then there will be rewards that are transferable to the main game. For example, for the main game we have a Twisted League Slayer Helm recolor, there is a Twisted League themed banner, a cosmetic Twisted League outfit, which looks pretty cool, a Twisted League home teleport animation, a Twisted League themed POH wall kit, a Twisted League ancestral ornament kit, and a cosmetic Twisted League trophy. One thing I have mentioned is any items that can be tradable will be tradable, for example the ornament kit. Uh, will be tradable and probably fairly expensive. Maybe this will even be a new money-making method. So anyway, I am pretty excited for the Twisted League, but let's move on. Now, I did mention that, that I already went over the statement that Jagex made on third-party clients, and I'm not going to go over it too much. Essentially, they just released a very vague statement regarding which plugins are allowed and which ones aren't. Now, they did specifically call out a few features, but RuneLight did actually release a patch today. Now, what they ended up doing is they just removed the Demonic Gorilla plugin because that one was specifically called out in the blog post by Jagex, but everything else has remained the same. Now, the other main feature that RuneLight may need to remove is the menu entry swapper. However, uh, Adam from RuneLight said that the wording was excessively vague and they are not entirely sure which plugins need to be removed, where to draw the line, uh, so I think they're currently contacting Jagex and most likely in the next patch we'll have a few more features removed from RuneLight, but for now the only thing actually removed is the Demonic Gorilla plugin. Another big piece of news this week is ModWolf left Jagex. Another fairly senior moderator leaving. That makes like four or five in the last year, I think. We had Mod Matt K. Was that 2018 maybe? Mod Aiza. Now Mod Wolf. There's been others too. Like a fair bit of the senior team is left, but apparently they are in the works of hiring more staff. So hopefully <laughs> none of the game updates will slow down because of this. But Mod Wolf did leave us with the Fremnic Exiles quest, so thank you very much. And the last up here, Mod West has teased us with a face guard remodel. I do like this one more, although it would be kind of nice just to change the base model, not make it like an ornament kit or anything like that. Currently, the Basilisk Jaw is currently worth around 22 mil, so it's still fairly expensive. And that is pretty much it for community news this week. Okay, now let's do a quick recap of this week's Q&A. Uh, there was a lot of questions about uh, third-party clients, which I did address in my other video. Again, I will link that, so I'm going to skip those for now. But honestly, don't even bother. There weren't a lot of answers anyway. Uh, what is the status of the account security blog? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. They said, we have identified work that we'd like to do with account security, and they do feel it handles most of the concerns, and we're in the process of working out when you might see those changes. They want to release the blog when we know more about that timeline. What is happening with the old school RuneScape team and everyone leaving? No, there is no microtransactions, not downsizing the team either, we want to grow. There is a new executive producer which we're going to introduce after RuneFest, a new dev started today and a new product manager, as well as a new QA manager. There are going to be more developer agreements with the engine team as well. There are a number of questions about whether a specific plugin is bannable. We can't say specifically right now, but we are monitoring it and we'll take action in the future if we need to. That answer is for everything. At one point, John C. mentioned that saving multiple logins on mobile. It might be a little complicated, but it should be possible. Not in the current immediate plan, but they'd like to follow up on that later. Do you think the new Need Is Not Helm should be the best in slot, having plus 6 or plus 5 as a strength bonus? And the straw poll result was pretty much exactly 50-50. Can we get agility contracts to make agility less painful? Uh, they don't think that would make it less painful. Contracts for the right content can be really engaging and rewarding. However, they feel that agility could be changed in other ways if players wanted it. Okay, more questions on the death mechanics. They have an idea for an in-game poll to address that specifically as the game progresses. Do you feel that locking Zora behind a quest requirement is necessary? Mod Kiernan said, really there's two sides to this. Of course the bots, but also whether it's an appropriate requirement. They generally don't like changing game content that already exists like that just for the sake of bots. However, they have seen success 
on other requirements they've tacked on, so there definitely needs to be some further discussion and research. Is there more room in the game for more guilds, for example a runecrafting or a tanks guild? There is room for all of them, so long as the content matches and feels right, they're a great place for essential content that fits. Elves in Priftinus have a rare unique item on their thieving table, can other high level thieving NPCs get their own? They really like this question as a lot of high level thieving NPCs aren't really engaged at a lot because they don't really have an incentive to do so. This would be a nice way to encourage that without impacting experience rates. If you have any ideas for designs, please let us know. And that is it for the Q&A and that is going to be it for my weekly recap. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like. If you have anything you want to discuss, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.